it's Eva here and welcome back to another video. Uh, today I'm going to be looking at making paper with this paper making kit I got for Christmas. It's by a company called White Dragon Paper on Etsy and it basically comes with everything you need. So I've been collecting paper for about six months now and today I'm just going to be using the shredded paper from my notebooks and my memo pads that I've been making. So it's not shredded but it's like the trim offs of the notebooks and this stuff took so long because I thought it would be easier to like cut it all up into little pieces first. My original plan was to make paper like I remember making it when I was a kid where we just tore up paper, we put it in a bowl with some water and uh, Bob's your uncle, Babby's your aunt, you can make paper. But I didn't really go according to plan but that was my initial plan, which is why I cut the paper up really, really fine and I'm adding in some post-its because I thought that would add a pop of colour. I was hoping that they wouldn't, uh, the colour wouldn't like be soaked away when I added the water, but it did, the pink post-its especially, did get a little bit soggy and <laughs> all the colour went, but you'll see that in a second. So I'm basically just adding some water. I don't really know how much water to add. I didn't really read the instructions. As normal, I don't... I just don't follow instructions, I just wing it because that's just what I'm like. I'm too lazy to read instructions and learn things, so I just learn things on my own uh, and I make mistakes. So this is me in the bathroom trying to make paper. <laughs> like I remember, and I don't remember having to blend it, but apparently you do. Oh, oh. oh I don't know if this is a good idea, you know? Yeah, that doesn't sound good. I mean, they said a hand blender would work on the Googles. Oh, I literally wasn't filming that whole thing, but I basically had the guard on, so I took it off. And now let's try again. I'm scared. Oh, that's better. So gross. Right, round two. One more time and then we're gonna watch a video. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. It says you have to do it in like an easy, a smooth motion. Um, like this. I feel like, I feel like that's not right. <laughs> okay. I did look online, but it wasn't very helpful. So I basically just added more water to this to make it thinner. We'll just try it again. I mean, that looks a lot better, right? Than it did. I don't know if it's meant to be that thick though. Like that's a really thick piece of paper. Next stage is get in a felt, put it on the board, and then I have to do this. Maybe. I'm just, I'm honestly guys, I just, I'm just making this up right now because I have no idea what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it on the floor in the bathroom. Because if I get all wet in here, it's fine. And I know that because I flooded the bathroom last week. I think I need to, I think we sponge, sponge the water out maybe? The best one yet. I think it's because there's more water in here. That's the trick. Oh, so much easier with more water. Pro tip. Now that I'm a pro, more water is everything. So I eventually got the hang of it and I ended up making five pieces of paper. I sped this up so you wouldn't have to stare at my feet, but I basically just pressed all the all the water out before I uh, laid the paper on the floor, because that's what I thought you were meant to do, because I hadn't read the instructions yet. And there it is, my first batch of paper. So it turns out you're actually meant to leave the paper on the felt to dry. I didn't know that. So I left it on the boiler overnight, but it hasn't really done anything, it's still wet. So I've strung this string up here. This is the air in cupboard, by the way. 
I just chucked all the tiles up there because they used to live on here. But it also says that you can hang them from the string. So I'm going to try that now and hopefully they don't fall. I mean, they do feel pretty, pretty sturdy. Ta-da! So they're literally held on very precariously with sellotape, but hopefully it doesn't fall and it will dry quicker. And then we've got all this felt left. I can make some more tonight. Paper making factory. Uh-oh. <laughs> Spoke too soon. Something magical has happened. These have literally been in here a day and look. They're all dry. This one here that I left on the rack is still soggy. And then the other one tore. So I had to put that back in the, the bucket. But I can take these off and try and f maybe flatten them. Cool, huh? Okay, so here's the paper. I just took it out of the air and cupboard. You can see little slivers of the paper that haven't been uh, smushed up, which is kind of cool. I don't want it to be completely perfect. And then on one side, it's like kind of like a rough texture. On the other side, if you look, I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but uh, there's like the pattern of the mesh. So that's pretty cool. They are a lot more brittle than I thought they were going to be. And as you can see, they haven't dried flat. I don't know if this is a good idea, but I'm going to use my flower press and I'm just going to press these guys overnight and see if they press out and don't crack. Because right now I don't think it'd be very easy to draw on them. I think it'd be quite difficult with how bumpy they are. Maybe it's because they're quite thick. Like I think maybe I need, need more water, I'm not sure. Cool. Leave that there and we'll pop back tomorrow. Oh, they look so flat. Look at that. It's pretty cool. If you hold it up to the light, there you go. If I put the light under, you can see where it's thin and where it's thick. So it's not like super even. That one is quite thick. It came out whiter than I thought, which is good because the paper paper stuff looked quite pink. Okay, it's voiceover April, she's back again. Uh, I thought I would try out some different materials on the paper before I jumped right in with uh, like an illustration. And surprisingly, the, the Copic markers and like the watercolor markers worked the best. Poskas were okay too, pencils were okay if they were sharp. The paint was a bit of a nightmare, the ink was a bit of a nightmare. This paper is made from 100% printer paper, so nothing to kind of like give it any, you know, like watercolour paper kind of feel or mixed media paper. So basically, if the paint had any water in at all, it just soaked in, uh, it, was, it was a bit of a mess. So I decided to go for the thinner piece of paper that I had made. A couple of them were like super thick, like chunky chunky paper. And I've been in this uh, rabbit phase for a couple of days, been drawing lots of bunnies, so I thought it might be nice to draw a little bunny. So I just uh, found one that I liked from my sketchbook and I attempted to copy it onto the paper. And one more thing I'm doing before I uh, draw is testing out how the eraser works. So I did actually erase out quite a lot when I was drawing this rabbit. and it doesn't like it like if you erase you can maybe erase once or twice in the same area but then the friction really tears up the paper uh, especially if the paper is a little bit damp if you've used a marker or you know paint or anything like that it really doesn't like it so i ended up doing this little rabbit put some little flowers around it i thought it was pretty going pretty cute i kind of like it right here then i start adding like more stuff on i don't know what i'm thinking uh, by the time I get to the pen, uh, I realised the rabbit's head was completely wrong, like the wrong shape. And the worst part is in a second when I decide to go in with a black pen and do the ice. I don't think I should be using, I don't think I'm qualified to be using black pen unless I'm doing a black and white piece because it is the worst. And then I try and fix it with gel pen and it just turns into like these scary beady little eyes so I spend like 10 minutes trying to fix it I rub it out I paint over it I raise it and in the end it looks like this a thing of nightmares so I thought there is no way I can fix this 
<laughs> Let me just do it again. Round two. The good thing is I already made some more paper. So this is some more paper I had made off camera and I added in the post-its right at the end. So there's a little bit more color, but you can't see that pink post-it there it does lose all of this color. I skipped basically everything because you'd already seen it. I did exactly the same process. This time I used a little bit less kind of bright pink and less blue pencil because that blue pencil with the pinks really didn't work very well. And I also tried to get the head the head correct on the rabbit because the other rabbit head was a little bit football shaped. And yeah, I think this one turned out pretty well. So that was like my first uh, drawing. I think Copic markers is definitely the way to go with this recycled paper. That was my first time making paper. Uh, sorry if the video was a little bit of a mess. It was a bit voiceover, a bit action on the day. That's all for me today. I hope that you enjoyed that and I will catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.